So here we have the beginning. The rabbit has been draped. And I'm cutting the incision. No, I'm not hacking at it. I'm just trying to get through the skin. Rabbit skin is actually really delicate, easy to cut with the clipper. And so the prepper has to be careful with that. Here I'm just getting some of the fascia out of the way. I'm poking a hole through the linea into the peritoneum and extending my incision so that I can look for the uterus. And so I'll take a spay hook and not really dig around for it because usually the uterus and the rabbit is right at the top or right at your incision, really pretty easy to find as opposed to a dog or cat, so there it is. Um, it's very pink compared to the rest of the intestines in a, a rabbit, very, very pink. So here I am gently trying to kind of bring the ovary up to my incision. There's a lot of oviduct in a rabbit, and the, the ovary kind of sits pretty low in there. If you pull too hard, everything rips, which is one of the many things that makes doing a rabbit's pay really pretty sucky. So I'm, I'm just gently pulling out, and you can kind of see that with my left hand, I'm just hanging on to the oviduct. And that little white thing you see there is the ovary. And um, I'm not going to do any major clamping because it's um, easy to tear everything. So I don't clamp anything. I just make a little hole and um, proceed to do tie a ligature. And by using the spay hook there just to keep the ovary out of the out of the incision so it doesn't fly back into the abdomen, which makes it very difficult. So here I'm just going to make a little window in the broad ligament to uh, bring my suture through and make a ligament or make a ligature around the ovarian vessels. And this is where it gets a little tricky because you don't have a clamp holding everything out for you. You can clamp. Some people will clamp. And that's totally fine, but for me it's just I don't want to rip anything, so I don't clamp it. So here I am trying to tie a ligature and hold out the ovary far enough to get uh, my ligature uh, far enough underneath the ovary so that I can trim it off and pull it away. So that is what I'm doing here. I have made one ligature. You really don't need to make too many. Here I'm just clamping the suture itself so that it kind of holds everything out. And now I'm going to look for some vessels within the broad ligament, which you would not need to worry about in a cat or a dog. Um, but here you have these vessels that go through the broad ligament, and you need to also ligate them, and or you're going to have some issues. And so you make a window on either side of the vessels. In a real fat bunny, you're not going to be able to see those vessels. You're just going to have to try to blindly suture or blindly ligate. And in a really thin or young rabbit, you can easily see those vessels. The downside of doing a thin or uh, uh, doing a young rabbit is that everything pulls, pulls apart really easily. So you can pull on, just barely pull on the uterus, and you have chunks of uterus maybe coming out um, without being attached to anything. So here I've made a window on each side of the vessels, and I'm just going to put one ligature around them here and then cut that off. So for the bunny, at this for this bunny anyway, I'm doing just one ligature on everything. When one ligature is sufficient. Using pretty small suture, 4 aught suture. And so now that I've got those two areas ligated, I'm going to cut my right above my ligature on each one, making sure I'm removing the ovary and the oviduct. And then I'm going to cut the vessels in the broad ligament right above where I um, ligated them. Here I am just trying to find a good spot to cut because there's you're working with very small areas and so you have to be careful. So there's the ovary coming back and here I am cutting above my ligature in the broad ligament and just separating some tissue, that uh, broad ligament tissue, and reflecting back the ovary and you can see that in a rabbit, since you don't really clamp anything, or since I'm not really clamping anything, you will see that it just tends to be a little bloodier than if you were doing a cat spay. Now here I'm going down and identifying where the, well, I'm pulling off some more 
rod ligament. But here I can go down and find easily find the other horn. It's already sitting out, but it's very easy to follow it around and find the other horn. And I'm basically going to be doing the same thing on the other side, very, very gently pulling out the ovary. Now that's the left side of the bunny, which is easier to get out in a dog and a cat the same way. The left side is easier to pull out because it's a little bit more caudal or toward the the bottom, bottom end of the animal. So it comes out of the incision um, a little bit farther. And so I already did the other side, which is the hard side first. And uh, some people to combat that will make a, a much bigger incision, which I did not, which I've done so many spays, I don't really need to make a, a big incision just to get an, an ovary to come out. Um, and in dogs, especially in dogs, you have to pull and break the suspensory ligament to get the ovary up out of the incision. In cats, I, in my experience, you don't really need to break that suspensory ligament, but sometimes you do just to get the ovary to come up a little farther, but once you do break that incision, then it will come out of your, or break that ligament, it'll come out of your incision a little bit better. So here I'm doing the same thing, tying off the ovarian pedicle underneath the ovary, and well, I'll bring that out. This, this time I don't really need to clamp those sutures to keep it out of the incision because those over, that ovary on that side is a little bit lower down and easier to get out. And again, I'm going to find the vessels in the broad ligament on this side and create a window on either side of the vessels and then tie a ligature around that. So that, that's one aspect of doing a rabbit spay that's different than doing a dog or a cat spay where you actually have this separate set of vessels that you need to ligate. Not to say that in a dog, especially a dog, you wouldn't have other vessels you might need to ligate that are just bleeding randomly, um, but these ones are the same in every rabbit where you need to, to ligate them. So here again, I'm going to cut right above that ligature in the broad ligament vessels and then cut right above the ligature that I made for the ovary, the pedicle, and reflect that back. So now I have both ovaries out and both sets of broad ligament vessels ligated. So here I found what's called the vaginal velt. The, the rabbit has two cervices and two uterine horns, so the two cervices to come together in a vaginal vault, and I'm going to ligate now that. What I did prior to that was kind of milked any fluid out, any urine basically, out of that vaginal vault into the uterus so that it comes out of the rabbit and doesn't stay and sit in the rabbit. So um, I'm ligating around that, and you can do it high or low. I usually like to do it right on the vaginal vault itself. And then here I am just cutting it away right above my ligature. So voila, the rabbit has now been spayed and um, all that's left at this point is to close, close her up. And the thing that can be a little bit frustrating with closing a rabbit is that, like I mentioned before, the skin is really delicate. So closing the linea and the muscle wall, which is what I'm doing, here, this first layer, is very easy. It's just like closing a cat or, or a dog for that matter. It's um, very straightforward. It's when you get down to closing the skin that it can be difficult because of the skin is so thin that it makes it hard to get the suture to do what you want it to do. So to me this is the most boring part of any surgery regardless of whether you're doing a cat, a dog, a rabbit, a spay, or a neuter. It's closing incisions. For that matter, um, doing a mass removal. Anything that requires you to create an incision, this is the most boring part. Because for every surgery, it's exactly the same. And you, for me, I pretty much do it the same way on every animal. So it gets to be a little bit monotonous. But here I've gotten to the end of the incision, so I tie it off. Uh, so that I have the beginning of my closure tied off, and then I have the end of my enclosure, my closure tied off. But I keep the suture attached to that end, 
and so then I can continue on and close the skin. I do not cut all of it off and start over again. I just go through and close the skin with the suture still attached to the knot that I just created. And when I come back and I get done with suturing the skin together, then I will take the tag that I left. The, the hemostat that's sitting there right now is attached to a tag of suture that I left from the beginning of closing the body wall. And so when I've actually finished closing the skin, I will tie it to that piece of suture so that it's a couple reasons. One is so that it's easier to bury, and then two, so that it's all kind of connected. You don't have so much, so you just, to me, you're using less suture then. If you didn't have that there, you'd have to create a loop and it just end up making bigger knot, more suture. So right now I'm trying to do a subcuticular closure so that um, my suture is buried because I don't want, obviously, this rabbit to be chewing out her sutures. There's no, no need for that. You can bury the sutures and that way she's not going to require having them removed later on. And rabbits are really good about leaving their incisions alone. I've never had one I've had to repair. They don't seem to lick on it and make them bleed or swell up or anything like that. So once we're getting to the end of the suturing the skin here, and it looks like I'm going pretty fast. I'm going pretty fast. Maybe, maybe it looks slow. It is what it is. But here's me putting my last bite in, and then I'm going to take this tag that I left and tie it together with the suture I have that just closed the skin. And once I've made my fourth rows, I'll cut off that end, that tiny end, and then I'll take this needle and do what's called smurfing through the skin to kind of pull the knot and bury it underneath the skin. And voila, it's closed, the small incision, and um, I might put a little bit of glue on there to help hold it together and then um, do a little bit of a tattoo. That's it.